Welcome back to my channel LinkedIn. Today we have discussed about reproduction reproduction in animals, chapter 6, class 8. Before starting this video please like and subscribe to my channel LinkedIn Pharma. Let's start. Introduction to Animal Reproduction Animal reproduction is a fundamental biological process through which organisms produce offspring of their own kind. This essential aspect of life ensures the continuation of species and the diversity of life forms on our planet. The remarkable adaptations and strategies employed by animals in their reproductive journeys have evolved over millions of years, leading to an array of fascinating reproductive behaviors and mechanisms across the animal kingdom. From simple asexual reproduction in some organisms to complex courtship rituals and mating behaviors in others, the study of animal reproduction unveils the captivating intricacies of life's perpetual cycle. Modes of Reproduction Animals exhibit various modes of reproduction, which can be broadly categorized into two main types, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. 1. Asexual reproduction Asexual reproduction involves the production of offspring without the involvement of gametes, sperm and egg cells, or the union of genetic material from two parents. Some common modes of asexual reproduction in animals include a. Budding New individuals grow as outgrowths, buds, from the parent organism and eventually separate to form independent individuals. b. Fragmentation An organism breaks into several fragments, and each fragment has the ability to develop into a complete organism. c. Parthenogenesis Offspring develop from unfertilized eggs, and no genetic contribution from a male is required. 2. Sexual reproduction Sexual reproduction involves the fusion of gametes from two parents, resulting in genetic diversity among offspring. This process contributes to the adaptation and evolution of species. Sexual reproduction modes include a. Internal fertilization Mating partners come together, and fertilization occurs inside the female's body, protecting the developing embryos. b. External fertilization Gametes are released into the environment, where fertilization takes place outside the organism's body. c. Viviparity Embryos develop inside the mother's body, where they receive nourishment from the mother until birth. d. Oviparity Eggs are laid by the female, and development takes place outside her body. The embryos receive nourishment from the egg's yolk. a. Ovoviviparity Eggs develop inside the mother's body, but the embryos receive nourishment from the yolk within the egg. The mother gives birth to live offspring. These diverse modes of reproduction have evolved to suit the specific needs and environmental conditions of different animal species, contributing to the fascinating array of life forms on Earth. Sexual Reproduction Sexual reproduction is a mode of reproduction in which two individuals of the opposite sex come together to create offspring. This process involves the fusion of specialized reproductive cells, called gametes, which are produced by the male and female organisms. The male gamete, known as sperm, and the female gamete, known as an egg or ovum, unite during a process called fertilization, resulting in the formation of a zygote, a single-celled organism with a unique combination of genetic material from both parents. Sexual reproduction as a prevalent and essential method among animals as it promotes genetic diversity and increases the potential for adaptation and survival. Through the combination of genetic material from different parents, offspring inherit a varied set of traits, enhancing their chances of adapting to changing environments and increasing their overall resilience. This complex process of sexual reproduction often involves various courtship rituals, mating behaviors, and reproductive structures tailored to the specific needs of each species. These adaptations have evolved over time and have contributed to the vast array of animal species with unique reproductive strategies found across the world. Male Reproductive Organs Male reproductive organs, also known as the male reproductive system, are specialized structures responsible for producing and delivering sperm, the male gametes, for sexual reproduction. These organs work together to ensure the successful fertilization of female eggs and the continuation of the species. The key male reproductive organs include testes. The testes, or testicles, are a pair of oval-shaped organs located within the scrotum, 
a sac outside the abdominal cavity. They are the primary reproductive organs in males and serve as the site of sperm production through a process called spermatogenesis. Testes also produce the male sex hormone testosterone, which plays a crucial role in the development of secondary sexual characteristics and maintaining reproductive health. Epididymis The epididymis is a coiled tube located behind each testis. It serves as a storage and maturation site for sperm. During their journey from the testes to the vas deferens, sperm gain motility and become capable of fertilization within the epididymis. Vas deferens The vas deferens is a muscular tube that connects each epididymis to the ejaculatory duct. It serves as a conduit for transporting mature sperm from the epididymis to the urethra during ejaculation. Seminal vesicles The seminal vesicles are a pair of glandular structures located behind the bladder and connected to the vas deferens. They secrete a fluid rich in fructose and other substances that provide nutrients and energy for the sperm. Prostate gland The prostate gland is a small, walnut sized gland situated below the bladder and surrounding the urethra. It produces a milky, alkaline fluid that helps neutralize the acidic environment of the female reproductive tract and enhances sperm motility. Cooper's gland, bulbatral gland, these small glands are located below the prostate gland and secrete a clear, lubricating fluid that mixes with sperm and seminal vesicle fluid to form semen. Urethra The urethra is a duct that serves as a passage for both urine and semen. During ejaculation, semen travels through the urethra and exits through the penis. Together, these male reproductive organs ensure the production, storage, and transportation of sperm, facilitating the process of fertilization during sexual intercourse. Female Reproductive Organs The female reproductive organs, also known as the female reproductive system, play a crucial role in the process of sexual reproduction and the development of offspring. These specialized organs are responsible for producing eggs, over, receiving sperm from the male during intercourse, providing a suitable environment for fertilization, supporting fetal development during pregnancy, and ultimately giving birth to a newborn. The key female reproductive organs include Ovaries The ovaries are a pair of almond-shaped organs located on either side of the uterus within the pelvic cavity. They are the primary reproductive organs in females and are responsible for producing and releasing eggs over during the menstrual cycle. Additionally, the ovaries produce female sex hormones, including estrogen and progesterone, which regulate the menstrual cycle and support various reproductive functions. Fallopian tubes, also known as uterine tubes or oviducts, the fallopian tubes are two narrow tubes that extend from each ovary towards the uterus. During ovulation, when an egg is released from the ovary, the fallopian tubes capture the egg and serve as the site of fertilization, where sperm can meet and fertilize the egg. Uterus The uterus, commonly referred to as the womb, is a pear-shaped, muscular organ located in the pelvic cavity between the bladder and the rectum. It is the place where a fertilized egg implants and develops into a fetus during pregnancy. The uterus undergoes cyclic changes during the menstrual cycle to prepare for potential pregnancy and shed the uterine lining, endometrium, during menstruation if fertilization does not occur. Cervix The cervix is the lower narrow part of the uterus that connects to the vagina. During pregnancy, it remains tightly closed to protect the developing fetus. During childbirth, it dilates to allow the passage of the baby from the uterus to the vagina. Vagina the vagina is a muscular, elastic canal that connects the cervix to the external genitalia. It serves as the birth canal during childbirth and also facilitates the passage of menstrual blood from the uterus to the outside during menstruation. Additionally, it provides the passage for sexual intercourse and the delivery of sperm into the female reproductive tract. Clitoris The clitoris is a small, sensitive erectile organ located at the front junction of the labia minora. It plays a significant role in sexual arousal and pleasure. These female reproductive organs work harmoniously to ensure the potential for fertilization, embryo development, and childbirth, enabling the continuation of the human species and other mammals through sexual reproduction. Fertilization Fertilization is the process in sexual reproduction where a male gamete, sperm, fuses with a female gamete, 
egg or ovum, to form a zygote, the first cell of a new individual with a unique combination of genetic material from both parents. The step-by-step -step process of fertilization can be summarized as follows. Step 1. Ovulation in females, the ovaries release a mature egg during a phase called ovulation. Ovulation typically occurs about halfway through the menstrual cycle. The egg is released from one of the ovaries and enters the fallopian tube. Step 2. Journey through the fallopian tube if sexual intercourse occurs around the time of ovulation, sperm introduced into the female reproductive tract can reach the fallopian tube. The fallopian tubes have hair-like structures called cilia, which help move the egg along the tube. Step 3. Sperm transport and capacitation Millions of sperm are ejaculated during sexual intercourse. They swim through the female reproductive tract toward the fallopian tubes. Along the way, the sperm undergo a process called capacitation, which involves changes that increase their motility and ability to penetrate the egg's protective layers. Step 4. Fertilization When sperm encounter the egg in the fallopian tube, one sperm successfully penetrates the egg's outer layers. This event is known as fertilization or conception. Once a sperm fuses with the egg, their genetic material combines, resulting in the formation of a single cell zygote with a complete set of chromosomes, half from the mother and half from the father. Step 5. Zygote formation The fertilized egg, or zygote, immediately begins to divide and undergo a series of cell divisions known as cleavage. As the zygote moves down the fallopian tube towards the uterus, it continues to divide into multiple cells, forming a ball of cells called a morula. Step 6. Implantation The morula reaches the uterus and undergoes further cell division and differentiation, becoming a blastocyst. The blastocyst eventually implants into the thickened lining of the uterus called the endometrium. This process is called implantation and usually occurs about 6 to 7 days after fertilization. Step 7. Pregnancy After Successful implantation, the blastocyst further develops into an embryo, and the process of pregnancy begins. The embryo continues to grow and develop, and various stages of development are marked by significant milestones until birth. Fertilization is a critical event in sexual reproduction, as it combines genetic material from both parents and initiates the development of a new individual with a unique set of traits inherited from each parent. Internal and external fertilization. Internal and external fertilization are two different methods of fertilization in animals, determining how the male and female gametes, sperm and egg, come together to form a zygote. The main differences between these two processes are the location where fertilization occurs and the strategies employed by the organisms. Internal fertilization. Internal fertilization is a method of fertilization in which the fusion of sperm and egg takes place inside the female's body. This process is common in many terrestrial animals, including most mammals, birds, reptiles, and some insects. Internal fertilization offers several advantages, such as protecting the developing embryos from external threats and providing a more controlled environment for fertilization and early development. In animals with internal fertilization, the male delivers sperm directly into the female's reproductive tract during mating. The sperm then travel to meet the eggs, which are already released and waiting in the female's reproductive system. The sperm need to navigate through the female's reproductive structures to reach the eggs and initiate fertilization. External fertilization External fertilization is a method of fertilization in which the fusion of sperm and egg occurs outside the female's body, typically in an aquatic environment. This method is commonly found in many aquatic organisms, including fish, amphibians, and some invertebrates. External fertilization is well suited for species that live in water because it allows the sperm to be released directly into the surrounding environment, where it can easily encounter and fertilize the eggs. During external fertilization, both male and female gametes are released into the water simultaneously, often during a reproductive event known as spawning. This synchronization ensures that the chances of fertilization are maximized. However, since the eggs are exposed to the external environment, they are more vulnerable to predation and environmental conditions, leading to a high number of eggs being produced to increase the likelihood of successful fertilization and survival. 
In summary, internal fertilization involves the fusion of gametes inside the female's body and is common in terrestrial animals, while external fertilization involves the fusion of gametes in the external environment and is prevalent among many aquatic organisms. Each method has its advantages and disadvantages and has been shaped by the specific needs and adaptations of different animal species. Development of Embryo The development of an embryo is a remarkable and complex process that occurs after fertilization and marks the beginning of a new individual's life. The step-by-step -step development of an embryo can be summarized as follows. Fertilization The development of an embryo begins with fertilization where a sperm cell from the male fuses with an egg, ovum, from the female. This fusion creates a zygote, a single-celled organism with a complete set of chromosomes, half from the father and half from the mother. Cleavage After fertilization, the zygote starts to undergo rapid cell divisions through a process called cleavage. The zygote divides into multiple smaller cells, forming a solid ball of cells known as a morula. Blastocyst formation the morula continues to divide and differentiate into two distinct cell types, the outer layer, known as the trophoblast, and the inner cell mass. The trophoblast will eventually give rise to the placenta, which plays a vital role in supporting the developing embryo during pregnancy. The inner cell mass will become the embryo proper. Implantation Around 5 to 7 days after fertilization, the blastocyst undergoes a process called implantation. It attaches and embeds itself into the thickened lining of the uterus, called the endometrium. Once implanted, the embryo establishes a connection with the mother's blood supply through the placenta, allowing for nutrient exchange and waste removal. Gastrulation After implantation, the inner cell mass undergoes a process called gastrulation. During gastrulation, the embryo forms three primary germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. These germ layers are the foundation for the development of all the major tissues and organs in the body. Organogenesis Organogenesis is the process where the germ layers differentiate and develop into the various organs and structures of the body. During this phase, the neural tube, which eventually becomes the brain and spinal cord, forms from the ectoderm. The mesoderm gives rise to the muscles, bones, circulatory system, and reproductive organs. The endoderm develops into the respiratory and digestive systems, as well as parts of the urinary system. Fetal Development By the end of the first trimester, around 12 weeks, the embryo is now referred to as a fetus. During the second and third trimesters, the fetus continues to grow and mature, and its organs become more functional. By the end of pregnancy, the fetus is ready for birth. The development of an embryo is a highly orchestrated process, with each stage carefully regulated by genetic signals and environmental factors. Any disruption during this process can lead to developmental abnormalities or birth defects. Understanding the intricate steps of embryo development is crucial for both medical research and providing adequate prenatal care to ensure the healthy growth of the developing fetus. Viviparous and oviparous animals Viviparous and oviparous are two distinct modes of reproduction in animals, describing how they give birth or lay eggs and bring forth their offspring. Let's explore each type. Viviparous animals Viviparous animals are those that give birth to live young directly, meaning the embryos develop inside the mother's body. The developing offspring receive nourishment and protection from the mother during the gestation period. When the embryos are fully developed, the mother gives birth to live, fully formed offspring. Most mammals, including humans, are viviparous. Examples of viviparous animals, humans, dogs, cats, dolphins, elephants, whales, oviparous animals. Oviparous animals are those that lay eggs as a means of reproduction. The female lays the eggs, and the embryos develop outside of the mother's body. These eggs contain all the nutrients necessary for the embryo's early development. The eggs are typically laid in a safe environment, such as in nests or hidden locations, where they can be protected from predators and the elements. After a period of incubation, the eggs hatch, and the young emerge as relatively independent individuals. Examples of oviparous animals Birds Reptiles Example 
snakes, turtles, lizards, amphibians, example, frogs, toads, salamanders, most fish species. It is important to note that some animals exhibit a combination of viviparity and oviparity. For instance, some sharks and certain reptiles are oviviparous, which means that the eggs develop within the female's body, but the embryos receive no direct nourishment from the mother. Instead, they rely on the yolk in the eggs for sustenance until they are born young. Young ones to adults. The transition from young ones to adults involves a series of developmental stages as animals grow and mature. The exact process and timeline can vary significantly among different species. However, there are some general patterns and common stages in the life cycle of animals. Let's explore the typical stages of development from young ones to adults. Birth or Hatching In viviparous animals, those that give birth to live young, the offspring are born in a relatively developed state. They are often dependent on their parents for care and nourishment in the early stages of life. In oviparous animals, those that lay eggs, the young hatch from the eggs after a period of incubation, typically in a safe and protected environment. Early Life and Growth After birth or hatching, the young animals begin their early life stage, during which they grow rapidly. They are highly dependent on their parents for food, protection, and guidance. Parental care varies among species, with some animals providing extensive care, while others exhibit more independent behavior from an early age. Adolescence or juvenile stage. As young animals continue to grow and develop, they enter the adolescence or juvenile stage. At this point, they have acquired most of their physical characteristics but have not yet reached sexual maturity. Juvenile animals often exhibit playful behavior and continue to learn essential skills from their parents or through interactions with other members of their species. Sexual maturity Sexual maturity marks the transition from adolescence to adulthood. At this stage, the animals have reached physical and reproductive maturity, enabling them to reproduce and produce offspring of their own. The age at which sexual maturity is attained varies widely among species, ranging from a few months to several years. Adulthood Adult animals have fully developed physically and are capable of reproducing. They have reached their maximum size and have acquired all the necessary physical and behavioral traits needed for survival and reproduction. Adult animals usually take on roles in their respective ecosystems, such as finding mates, establishing territories, and caring for their offspring. Aging in senescence As animals age, they may go through a phase of senescence, which is the gradual decline in physical and reproductive capabilities. Senescence varies in duration among species, with some animals experiencing a relatively short lifespan, while others can live for several decades or even centuries, in the case of some long-lived species like certain tortoises or whales. Throughout these stages of development, animals adapt to their environments, learn survival skills, and contribute to the overall balance and diversity of ecosystems. The life cycle from young ones to adults is a remarkable journey, showcasing the wonders of nature's continuous process of growth, reproduction, and renewal. Metamorphosis Metamorphosis is a biological process that involves a significant transformation in the form and structure of an animal during its life cycle. This process occurs in certain groups of animals, most notably in insects, amphibians, and some marine invertebrates. Metamorphosis is a fascinating and crucial adaptation that allows these organisms to adapt to different environmental conditions and niches throughout their life stages. There are two main types of metamorphosis. Complete metamorphosis. Complete metamorphosis is characterized by four distinct stages. A. Egg. The life cycle begins with the hatching of an egg. The egg contains all the genetic information needed for the development of the organism. B. Larva, caterpillar, grub, maggot. After hatching, the organism goes through the larval stage. Larvae are typically very different from the adult form and often have specialized structures and behaviors for feeding and growth. They undergo multiple molds, shedding their exoskeleton as they grow larger. C. Pupil, chrysalis or cocoon. After the larval stage, the organism enters the pupil stage. 
During this phase, it undergoes a complete reorganization of its body tissues and structures inside a protective casing, chrysalis in butterflies or cocoon in moths. This is a period of significant change and development. D. Adult. Finally, the fully developed and transformed adult emerges from the pupil casing. The adult has different body structures and functions from the larval stage and is usually the reproductive and mobile stage of the organism's life cycle. In many cases, the adult stage is also the phase where mating and reproduction occur. Examples of organisms that undergo complete metamorphosis include butterflies, moths, beetles, and flies. Incomplete metamorphosis. Incomplete metamorphosis involves three stages. A. Egg. As in complete metamorphosis, the life cycle starts with the hatching of an egg. B. Nymph or naiad. After hatching, the organism goes through the nymphal or naiad stage. Nymphs are similar in appearance to the adult form but lack some adult structures, such as wings and reproductive organs. They undergo multiple molds, growing larger with each mold. C. Adult. The final stage is the adult form, which emerges from the last nymphal instar. The adult has wings and fully developed reproductive structures. Examples of organisms that undergo incomplete metamorphosis include grasshoppers, dragonflies, and some aquatic insects like damselflies and mayflies. Metamorphosis is a fascinating adaptation that allows these animals to occupy different ecological niches during various stages of their life cycles, maximizing their chances of survival and successful reproduction. Test Tube Babies Test tube babies, also known as in vitro fertilization, IVF, is a medical procedure used to help individuals or couples with fertility issues conceive a child. The process involves fertilizing an egg with sperm outside the body, in a laboratory setting, and then transferring the resulting embryo back into the woman's uterus for pregnancy. Here is a step-by-step -step explanation of the IVF process. Step 1. Ovarian stimulation The first step in IVF is ovarian stimulation. The woman undergoes hormonal treatment, usually with injectable medications, to stimulate her ovaries to produce multiple mature eggs. Normally, a woman releases only one egg during her menstrual cycle, but in IVF, multiple eggs are needed to increase the chances of success. Step 2. Monitoring an egg retrieval during ovarian stimulation the woman's response is closely monitored using ultrasounds and blood tests to track the development of the ovarian follicles, which contain the growing eggs. Once the follicles reach the appropriate size, a trigger injection is administered to trigger the final maturation of the eggs. Approximately 36 hours after the trigger, a minor surgical procedure called egg retrieval, oocyte retrieval, is performed. Using a thin needle guided by ultrasound, the eggs are gently aspirated from the follicles in the ovaries. Step 3. Sperm collection On the day of egg retrieval, the male partner provides a sperm sample. If there are any male fertility issues or if the couple is using donor sperm, the sperm may have been collected and prepared in advance. Step 4. Fertilization The retrieved eggs and the sperm sample are brought together in the laboratory for fertilization. There are two primary methods for fertilization. A. Conventional IVF. In this method, a certain number of sperm are added to each egg in a petri dish, and the fertilization occurs naturally. B. Intracytoplasmic sperm injection, ICSC. If there are sperm-related issues, or if the conventional method has failed previously, a single healthy sperm is directly injected into an egg to achieve fertilization. Step 5. Embryo culture After fertilization, the eggs develop into embryos. The embryos are cultured in the laboratory for a few days to allow them to grow and develop. The embryologists monitor the embryo's progress, assessing their quality in selecting the most viable ones for transfer. Step 6. Embryo transfer Once the embryos have developed, the best quality embryos are selected for transfer to the woman's uterus. This procedure is usually performed 3 to 5 days after egg retrieval. A thin, flexible catheter is used to transfer the selected embryos into the uterus through the cervix. Step 7. Pregnancy test About 2 weeks after the embryo transfer, a pregnancy test is performed to determine if the IVF procedure was successful and if the woman has conceived. 
IVF may involve several cycles to achieve pregnancy, and the success rates vary depending on various factors such as the woman's age, the cause of infertility, and the quality of the embryos. It is essential to discuss the procedure and its potential outcomes with a qualified reproductive specialist to make informed decisions about fertility treatment. Asexual Reproduction Asexual reproduction is a mode of reproduction in which offspring are produced without the involvement of gametes, sperm and egg cells, or the fusion of genetic material from two parents. Instead, a single parent organism can generate genetically identical or nearly identical offspring, known as clones. Asexual reproduction is prevalent in various organisms across the animal kingdom and offers several advantages, such as rapid and efficient reproduction in stable environments. There are several common methods of asexual reproduction. Budding. Budding is a form of asexual reproduction where new individuals grow as outgrowths or buds from the parent organism. The buds eventually develop into independent individuals, genetically identical to the parent. Fragmentation. Fragmentation occurs when a parent organism breaks into several fragments, and each fragment has the ability to develop into a complete individual. This process is common in some invertebrates, such as flatworms and starfish. Parthenogenesis Parthenogenesis is a type of asexual reproduction in which unfertilized eggs develop into offspring without the need for sperm. The offspring are genetically identical to the mother. This mode of reproduction is found in certain insects, reptiles, and some fish. Spore formation Some organisms, such as fungi, algae, and some plants, reproduce asexually through spore formation. Spores are single cells or multicellular structures that can grow into new individuals under suitable conditions. Vegetative reproduction Vegetative reproduction occurs in plants when new individuals grow from vegetative parts, such as roots, stems, or leaves. This process allows plants to propagate rapidly and colonize new areas. Asexual reproduction has certain advantages, including rapid population growth and the ability to colonize new habitats efficiently. However, it can also limit genetic diversity within a population, making the species more vulnerable to environmental changes and diseases. Sexual reproduction, on the other hand, promotes genetic diversity and contributes to adaptation and evolution, which is why many organisms utilize a combination of both sexual and asexual reproductive strategies depending on their environment and life cycle. Binary fusion Binary fission, which is a common form of asexual reproduction found in certain single-celled organisms like bacteria and some protists. Binary fission is a simple and efficient method by which these organisms can reproduce and increase their population. Here's how binary fission works. Replication of DNA Before binary fission occurs, the parent cell's genetic material, usually a single circular chromosome in prokaryotes, undergoes replication, creating two identical copies of the chromosome. Cell elongation The cell elongates and increases in size as it prepares for division. During this stage, the two copies of the chromosome move to opposite ends of the cell. Cell division The cell membrane pinches inward at the center, creating a cleavage furrow or constriction, or the cell wall forms a septum, depending on the type of organism. This division process separates the original cell into two identical daughter cells. Separation The two daughter cells fully separate from each other, becoming individual cells. Each daughter cell receives one copy of the replicated chromosome. The newly formed daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cell, representing a clone of the original organism. This process of binary fission allows single-celled organisms to reproduce rapidly and efficiently, leading to population growth and the colonization of new environments. It's essential to note that binary fission differs from mitosis, which is a type of cell division in eukaryotic organisms, such as plants, animals, and fungi. Mitosis involves the division of the cell's nucleus and its genetic material into two identical daughter nuclei, followed by the division of the cell's cytoplasm, resulting in two identical daughter cells. Binary fission is specific to certain single-celled organisms without a nucleus, known as prokaryotes. Story of Dolly, the clone Once upon a time, in a scientific laboratory in Scotland, 
a groundbreaking event was about to take place. Scientists were on the verge of achieving something that had never been done before, the successful cloning of a mammal. This pioneering project aimed to create an identical genetic copy of a sheep, and they named her Dolly. Dolly's story began on July 5, 1996, when she was born at the Roslyn Institute in Edinburgh, Scotland. Unlike most other sheep, Dolly was not conceived through the usual process of sexual reproduction involving a male and female parent. Instead, she was the product of a revolutionary technique known as somatic cell nuclear transfer. To create Dolly, scientists used a cell from the udder of an adult female sheep as the donor cell. This cell contained a full complement of genetic material, including all the instructions needed to develop a complete sheep. Next, they took an egg cell from another sheep and removed its nucleus, effectively making it an empty shell. The donor cell from the udder was then placed into the empty egg cell. Through a carefully controlled process, the donor cell and the egg cell were fused together. This fusion activated the egg cell's development machinery, as if it had been fertilized by a sperm. Miraculously, the egg cell began to divide and grow into an embryo. The embryo was then transferred into the womb of a surrogate mother sheep, where it continued to develop until it was ready to be born. And so, on that historic day in July, Dolly, the first cloned mammal, came into the world. News of Dolly's birth spread like wildfire, capturing the imagination of people around the globe. She became an instant celebrity and symbol of scientific advancement. Dolly's existence raised both excitement and concerns among scientists and the public. Some celebrated the achievement as a monumental step forward in biotechnology, offering potential medical and agricultural applications. Others worried about the ethical implications and potential risks associated with cloning. As Dolly grew, she lived a relatively normal life, surrounded by scientists who closely monitored her health and development. However, as she aged, concerns arose about the implications of cloning on her well-being. Dolly developed arthritis at a relatively young age, which raised questions about potential health issues that cloned animals might face. Despite these concerns, Dolly's legacy as the world's first cloned mammal remains undeniable. She paved the way for further advances in cloning technology and inspired countless scientific investigations. Although Dolly passed away prematurely at the age of six, her memory lives on, reminding the world of the wonders and challenges that come with the frontier of genetic engineering and cloning technology. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.